So welcome to part two of um, the uh, writing in detail about specific passages that will pick your, all your AO2 marks in your coursework. So um, Winston had, has been to a prostitute and then it's caused him to remember his wife. So we were just reading about him remembering his wife and how she didn't really want to have sex with him. And then here, he saw himself standing in there in the dim lamplight with the smell of bugs and cheap scent in his nostrils and in his heart a feeling of defeat and resentment, which even at that moment was mixed up with the thought of Catherine's white body, frozen forever by the hypnotic power of the party. <coughs> why did it always have to be like this? Why couldn't he, why could he not have a woman of his own instead of these filthy scuffles at intervals of years? But a real love affair was an almost unthinkable event. The women of the party were all alike. Chastity was as deep ingrained in them as party loyalty. By careful early, early conditioning, by games and cold water, by the rubbish that was dinned into them at school and by the spies and their youth league, by lectures, parades, songs, slogans and martial music, the natural feeling had been driven out of them. So, He's flashed back to his wife and now he's back thinking about women in general and um, prostitution. So we've got this kind of this imagery of disgust, the smell of bugs. I don't know how bad cheap perfume is. I think that's a bit strong to call that disgust. But here we've got the smell of bugs and cheap scent in his nostril. So it's it's distasteful and this whole event is it's conjuring up this imagery is conjuring up his wife and prostitution and kind of aligning them and so it's all mixed up he actually says it there with the thought of Catherine's white body frozen um, so that you might say is the opposite of warm sexuality um, so why could he not have a woman of his own you gotta love that phrase a woman of my own instead of filthy scuffles with the odd prostitute at interval of years. The women, and so then he goes on to give Winston's explanation, but Winston and the narrator are very closely bound. It feels like it could be the narrator's explanation as well. Women were all alike, so that is what you call typing or stereotyping. And they've had all this conditioning. I love the cold water. But anyway, the conditioning, um, so, uh, and he lists out the methods of conditioning, the lectures, parades, the songs. Um, uh, it, their natural feeling has been driven out of them. Some might think that's the role of the church um, with both genders all the time. Anyway, that could be a separate issue. So it's a huge Marxist thing. That, um, that there is no natural feeling in it. Every feeling you've got is kind of created. But I think you're better off um, actually ignoring that side of it and going with, uh, this is inside Winston's head, but it's given the authority of the narrator at this point. It sounds like the narrator's explaining to you what all these women are like and how they've all been conditioned. Um, on to the last paragraph, last half paragraph, isn't it? His reason told him there must be exceptions, but his heart didn't believe it. They were all impregnable, he couldn't get through, as the party intended that they should be. And what he wanted more even than to be loved was, the breakdown, was to break down that wall of virtue, even if it was only once in his life. The sexual act successfully performed was rebellion. Desire was thought crime. Even to have awakened Catherine, if he could have achieved it, would have been like a seduction, although she was his wife. Um, I see I've got, oh yeah. So here it's more of, of Winston thinking and all these women are the same. They were all impregnable. And that's only Winston's thoughts, but got the sort of confidence and the authority of the narrator. He wanted to break down that wall of virtue. So he wants to, uh, we've got that image there of him breaking down a wall that these women have put up against him. But ironically, this is in chapter six and it's Julia who approached him and got him to a place where she could have sex with him. 
So he's dreaming about breaking down a wall of virtue, whereas in fact someone else has already broken down his wall, as in Julia has already broken down his wall. So that's quite interesting. Is it a mistake by Orwell? Or is it um, almost mocking Winston's got these ideas, but it's already happened to him. He's already met a woman who is an exception to the party rules, who hasn't been brainwashed and who does want to have sex. Um, you have to help me with that one. Um, so he meets Julia in chapter two and this is chapter six. So unless it's a flashback within a flashback, um, it's already happened. Can someone help me? Um, so the sexual act successfully performed was rebellion. Here we've got lots of very nice ideas um, about the personal being political. So the sexual act is re a rebellion because it's banned and desire is a thought crime because that's banned. These sorts of feelings are, are banned. So the most intimate personal part again being a political act. So the methods that you should be writing about from everything I've said in these two videos, we've got an assumed male reader, a male narrator presenting this man's experience as everyone's experience. That's this universalizing. Everyone has had this experience, forgetting that half the women people are women, uh, gay men don't come into it even. Um, Connecting the prostitution and Catherine, people having sex for more for reasons, not desire, either for money or by political duty. And we've got objectifying Catherine inside Winston's thought process. So because he's got a male narrator, you never understand why Catherine's the way she is. You've just got Winston's word for it. We've got that imagery of um, the distasteful imagery othering Catherine. Um, uh, I said just a minute ago, and then the placement of this section in the novel, oops, I put before or after, after he's met Julia. So she instigates their meeting and then he meets her. And then we have this section of the novel. So um, I need your help with um, what's gone on there. But those are quite nice ones. The male reader, male narrator, flashback, objectification, that's a bit weird of me. Hopefully you can get a better word than distasteful and the placement in the novel. Well done, everybody.